We've lived in Moore all our lives, and so have our mom and dad. Mom's father was born in Moore, and so was his mother, our great-grandma Jury. But that was way back in 1896. Longtime resident Jenny January once wrote a short story about the history of Moore. Through her writing, she tells of the events that created our community. Instead of that backdrop, do you suppose that was painted? There was a train conductor on the Santa Fe Railroad who was named Mr. Moore. Other men who worked on the train teased him about putting his name on the little building and calling it the town of Moore, a town of one solitary building. One day as the train stopped to take on water, a man jumped off and tacked a sign on the shack that said, Moore, stop. This was a joke, but it was a good one, and the sign stayed there. And so did the name. With the land run came settlers to Moore, and by the first census of 1893, 100 people lived here, sort of. Well, they were taking the census, and they counted to 99. W.G. Jury, my grandfather, was on the, taking the census. And they had 99, and when they said 99, they heard a donkey bray, and it was John Cottrell's donkey. And I meant to go look it up and see if there's a Jack Cottrell. Now there is. <laughs> on the census record, that made it even 100. In the early 1900s, Moore grew even further with the extension of the interurban trolley line, bringing folks from Oklahoma City. But the whole town burned down in 1910, which led to a new town made of brick. This thanks to the ingenuity of a man named P.R. Sims. He had a little machine that he built himself in a blacksmith shop that would build these concrete blocks and then he'd uh, dump them in position right at the building site and allow them to cure by the, in the weather for, for 30 days before he started building his buildings. And there were several buildings in Moore that was built in his handmade concrete block. For the first half of the 20th century, Moore remained a small agricultural community made up of farmers and shop owners. It wasn't until the urban expansion of the 1960s that things really began to pick up. We were labeled and it was publicized that we were the fastest growing city in the southwest part of the United States. I think they finally revised it and said it was one of the fastest growing cities in the world. And today, city officials say Moore is adding as many as 1,500 new residents a year, the population rapidly approaching 50,000. It's a long way from Mr. Moore's train stop and all that history in between. I like my hometown. I'm proud of it and the progress it has made during the 100 years it has existed. We feel like we're a part of a great crowd of people like W.G. and Artie, like Vera and Joe, like Mr. Dyer and his era drugstore, like the railroad conductor named Moore, who have all gone together into making the history of Moore and of Oklahoma and of the United States. We're only two little kids in this great nation, but we're a part of it and have some kind of a job to do before we go on to become history, like all those who have gone before us. This unrenovated section may give you some idea of how this building looked when it was Old Moore High School. Now it's getting a new lease on life as Old Moore Business Center. We're here in the entryway and if you look up you'll see the original ceiling um, of the old school that was built in the 1930s and the new lighting. Walking in the front doors of the Old Moore High School, it doesn't take long to notice the transformation. These beautifully renovated hallways now provide for offices and shops instead of classrooms in what is now the old school business center. When people walk in that have never been in here, their initial reaction is, wow, can't believe it. Never would have thought it when you're standing on the outside what it actually looks like, looks like when you get on the inside. So people have a tremendous response when they walk in this building. Major renovations have been made to the lower level 
Marble floors, antique fixtures, and wood paneling have been added. The old tin ceiling has been restored and even the auditorium refurbished, all to create a one-of-a-kind commercial complex. But it's more kind of a, an upscale look to it and there's really not anything like that anywhere here. The upscale look is attracting unique businesses like a women's boutique, a health spa, and law offices. But as you might expect, upscale is not the way it started. This would be what would have been uh, the two stalls approximately in the women's restroom. And on the left would have been uh, two more. This is the second floor of the building. Old lockers and chalkboards still line the walls, and virtually everything will have to be refurbished. It makes you appreciate what's already been completed downstairs. Restoring such things as the old tin ceilings take a lot of work. You have to mold it back and get it to fit flat up there across those bats and then nail it up there. But also on the back side, if it's, if it's, if it's rusted real bad, that, that's when you got to, you know, get in there. And we've had holes that big in it that we've had to patch. Joe Alexander and his business partner, Charlie Cotton, are the developers behind Old School Business Center. Having attended high school here themselves, they wanted to save the building and make it useful again. Up until the current owners, Joe Alexander and Charlie Cotton, purchased um, the building from more public schools. And they traded them, actually traded them a piece of land for this building where there will be a future more public schools on that piece of land. So a very unique situation how they came about purchasing this building. I've been in here several times before and I'm very, not only surprised, but I'm very pleased about it. For alumni of Old Moore High School, the building has great sentimental and historical importance. We got uh, permission of the Moore School Board and, and all to have it uh, placed on the Oklahoma Historical Register and then we got it on the National Register as well. And for good reason. The building dates back to 1928 when it replaced a school that burned down at the same site. Students went to elementary, junior high, and high school here, creating a unique camaraderie among those that attended all 12 years together. We were more like family then. Each class was family. We our still our are. Class is still we still close. are. You know, I mean, you were friends with older people, with younger people. You rode the bus, everybody rode the same buses. So, I mean, you weren't separated by the years or anything. And I think it really made people a lot closer. You can just imagine what high school reunions must be like here. Stand down here in the building and, and see people come in from the, the north entrance, you know, and they'd shade their eyes and look. And, oh, it's so-and-so, I haven't seen them in 40 years. And I've been to a lot of revivals that weren't as good. <laughs> this is the auditorium that is um, available for community and nonprofit use. Also, children um, uh, can have access to this. We've had many great events in this um, auditorium. We hope the building is a starting point um, for the downtown area. To, to come back and, uh, and be a thriving part of more. So we hope this building will open people's eyes and bring attention to there are things happening in the downtown Moore area. Sometimes it takes a look at the past to get a glimpse of the future. At least that's the hope for Old School Business Center and all the alumni who went to school within its walls. Well, that's the only connection we have back to our past history in Moore. All the other old buildings have been moved or destroyed and it was a focal point of our community when we were growing up and we just love the building. <laughs>